All right. So today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at have a mind to work. And uh, if time allows it, we are going to look at a number of things. So get your Bible, get your notebook, get your pen. Today, we might do a lot of uh, writing, but of course, the audio will be up in our platforms so that you can also be able to um, listen more and more. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, if you're writing and I suggest you do, write this down. Nothing in this world works until you have a mind to work. Write that down. Are you writing? Nothing in this world works until you have a mind to work. Praise be to God. Nothing in this world works until you have a mind to work. The default state of anything in this world is chaos. If you have a garden or you have a piece of land that you have not cultivated for the last couple of months, I can guarantee you, you'll find weeds. Is it true? Is it true, Mr. Francis? You will find weeds. Weeds will come not because you did not uh, prophesy against them. It's the nature of chaos. Anything, the default state of anything, like I said, is chaos. We see that from Genesis 1.1. From Genesis 1.1, we see God bombarded with a chaotic uh, um, a concussion of a creation. So from that onset, the default state of anything is chaos. You will notice that at the beginning of the year, we make resolutions to change our minds, change our eating habits, who is a culprit of that, become better people, and so on, but we fail to go through with our resolutions because we don't have a mind to work. The reason why we don't keep our resolutions is because we don't have a mind to work. Me included, I have noticed that January 1st, you want to pray more. You want to fast more. You want to read the Bible more. Uh, but I can guarantee you, if you're not careful, by the third month, you will shock yourself that whatever you had purpose to do in January, you're no longer doing it. The genesis, of your life be, uh, uh, the genesis of your life becoming better will begin when you set your mind to work on yourself. God will not do it for you. God has created the necessary environment, but you will have to do the work for yourself. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. You will have to also talk to me, talk back to me, especially huh, very soon, very soon. Buenas <laughs> tardes, You'll be preaching here, I'll be looking at you like this. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm joking, yeah? So the genesis of your life becoming better begins when you set your mind to work on yourself. Listen to me, married people. If you do not work on your marriage, it is not generational curses that will bring it down. It is your lack of working on your marriage. Praise be to God. And let's not over-spiritualize everything. Can I hear an amen? amen? There is nothing spiritual with kissing your wife. You are meant to kiss your wife. Watch out and it's the end of your route. You are meant to kiss your wife. You are meant to be romantic. Amen. Hello. Amen. Praise be to God. My Kikuyu brothers, we are going to up our game. We shall be romantic. Amen. And romance doesn't mean you bring your wife a hibiscus flower. Nunulie a rose flower. Bona sifuwe sana. And our Kikuyu ladies, we are going to up our game. The, the story of Mashakura and submarine food and burnt offering, we shall not take it again in Jesus' name. We must have a mind to work. Praise be to God. Sister girl, you want to be married, learn some things about marriage. Get a book. Work on your mind. Work on yourself. Praise be to God. How can you say you want to get married and you don't know how to cook? Your husband cannot be eating Indomie. meal. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You must have a mind to work on yourself. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. This is salvation and everything that Jesus has done, plus your responsibilities in Christ. Yeah. Praise be to God. Can I talk to the husbands? Yeah. Ken is your duty to provide for your family. 
and can say it? Amen. It is your duty to provide for your family. I'm going to get there in Jesus' name. So, besides God primarily creating you for worship, he created you for work. What is work? Work is activity involving mental or physical effort in order to achieve a purpose or result. Work is an activity involving mental or physical effort in order to achieve a purpose or a result. Can I repeat it again? Work basically means it's an activity involving mental, that's involving your mind, or physical effort involving your body and your strength, uh, done in order to achieve a purpose or a result. Take a journey with me to the book of Genesis. We are not going to read it, but I'm going to paint this picture. In the book of Genesis, we see God created man. Cindy, before the wife came, who was the first person in the picture? It was man. Can the men say it was a man? See the order of God. God did not create a woman before he created a job, a work for the man. He said, you shall tend the garden. Is it making sense? So for a man, your sing, for, for a single man here, your work is not to look for a wife. Your work is to look for work. I don't need your amens today, but go read and listen to the audio. It's going to help you. So before you look for a wife, look for work. God is very orderly in what he does. Can I hear an amen? Actually, basically, when you get your work, that is your assignment. That is what you're supposed to do. When you get your work, it now defines who you marry. Yeah. You don't get somebody to marry, then you're defining their work to them. Can I hear an amen? First, discover your work. Hallelujah. And uh, deprogram yourself from this kind of Christianity that all we do is to prophesy. Listen, after prophesying, after praying. God is going to bless the work of your hands, not the work of your wishful thinking. Can I hear an amen? You want an iPhone, go work. Break your back. Chimba mitaro. Buona sifuya sana. Hallelujah. This sermon, my father in the faith preached it in the year 2009. 2009, this sermon. I'm actually using his notes verbatim. <laughs> Praise God. And I was telling my wife, we were reminding ourselves with my wife, my dad will preach this, and on Monday, I will go to the factories, because I, I wasn't in full-time ministry. I was doing IT, it was not picking up. I will go to the factories to look for work. I will not stay at home. Can I hear an amen? This... This nonsense of staying at home and, and, and the t you're watching the TV until it turns gray. It is not of God. It is not of God. Can I hear an amen? We can work here prophesying you until our hands don't have fingerprints for elections. And you will never make it because you don't have a mind to work. Central people listen to me. Are you recording, Kibiu? Yes. Central people listen to me. It is not the duty of a woman to go to work and you stay at home. It is not. Matter of fact, I know you do facial. To, to what? <laughs> I know you do facial. Can I hear an amen? But me, I grew with a crop of men where we never used to do facial, manicure or pedicure. There is something romantic with a man akinuka sweat na meleta mkate. We don't want slakings. Ah, can we talk? We don't want slakings. Jamana tembea hivi na hakuna kitu analeta. Bwana sifiwe sana. Your wife should not be breaking her back to bring nyanya and you're there. Mongedo. Mongedo. The devil is a liar. And his mother is no. Can I hear an amen? You will work. Oh. You will work. There is, listen, from the point of God, everything has already been made available. You are anointed. You are a new creation. You have the backing of heaven. 
Now roll up your sleeve and work. Can I hear an amen? And one of the ways that God will use you to get out of debt and your family out of debt and into financial abundance is through work. You must work your hands. And I was telling Glenn yesterday, this scripture about the children of this world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. The children of this world are wiser. Praise be to God. Let's graduate from a place where you're coming from Kesha to go sleep. You, you go to sleep, and this child has been watching Netflix the whole night. Wakes up in the morning, goes to Marigiti, takes Waru, brings Waru here to sell. Then where after umeamuka, unenda kukopa the same Waru. The same Waru. The same Waru. Both of you lacked sleep. Yet one is wiser. And then you're saying, poverty is not coming. Poverty, I refuse. Poverty will not find me. It will find you. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Can I hear an amen? amen? Praise be to God. I'm a pastor. Ask my wife. I'm a pastor. She knows. But I will not, if, if, if it was not for God's direction, I would even be a makanga to provide for my family. It doesn't reduce the anointing. It doesn't reduce the anointing. Can I hear an amen? The Bible actually says, if you are not able to provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel. In other words, in the eyes of God, an unbeliever here and you that is not providing, you're worse than this one. This one that is not born again. Break your back. Sell sweets. We will buy. Uza mandazi. Zunguka na mandazi. Tutanunua. Kuwa makanga. There's nothing wrong, by the way. Praise be to God. Pesa ikikuja makanga na ikuja ya kriskirubi. Pesa nipe? I came to stir you up. After praying, after fasting, please. Tafta Mr. Francis umulize. Nikikamua ngombe yako utanilipa how much? I would rather work with such a man. I would rather work with such a man. Praise be to God. If you don't work with your hands, you will be subject to a lender. You will be a servant always. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now listen to me. The book of Nehemiah shows us the importance of having a mind to work. We shall look at a panoramic view of this book in order to get his audacity to have the mind to work. Panorom pa 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 <laughs> panoramic means we, we are going to take a, about a 360 degree. Now listen. For you to understand the book of Nehemiah, it's connected to the book of Ezra. So you have to read Ezra and also read Nehemiah. Go and read Ezra and Nehemiah. All right? So Nehemiah was a layman, not a priest like Ezra, nor a prophet like Malachi. He served the Persian king in a secular position before leading a group of Jews to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the city walls. Nehemiah's expertise in the king, king's court equipped him adequately for the political and physical reconstru reconstruction necessary for the remnant to survive. Imagine he moved from a cup bearer of the king to rebuilding the fallen walls. Can I hear an amen? That is also another principle there. That means for me, if I were you, get to a place you don't choose. Don't be choosy in what to do. Don't be choosy. That the only job you want is a white collar job. There are green collars also. Praise be to God. If you get a white collar job, praise be to God. If you don't get it, manufacture, do something. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, under Nehemiah's leadership, the Jews withstood opposition and came together to accomplish their goal. Now, you remember the story of Sanballat and Tobias? All right, we're going to get there. Nehemiah led by example, giving up a respected position in a palace for hard labor. See, sometimes the promotions of God will look like you're being demoted. Write that down. Sometimes the promotions of God will look like you're being demoted. Listen, God can allow you to move from a three-bedroom house to a bed-sitter. It's the leadings of, of God. But we are quick to equip ourselves with what is happening with our friends. Mr. Francis and the rest of us, sometimes we entertain gossip because we are losing our mind in our work. 
See, when you focus, Glenn, on your work, you have got no time for gossip. Trust me. When you focus on your assignment, imagine meeting Bob Colimo and the CEO of KCB and the other CEO. You think they gossip about you think they gossip about people? No. They are exchanging ideas. Can I hear an amen? Nehemiah recorded the reconstruction of the wall of Jerusalem, Judah's capital city. Together, he and Ezra, who led the spiritual revival of the people, directed the political and religious restoration of the Jews in their homeland after the Babylonian captivity. So Nehemiah's life provides a fine study on leadership. He overcame opposition from outsiders as well as internal turmoil. The day you begin to work, Velma, on what's your business name? Ra? Rajik. Ha. Beauty. So when you begin to work on Rajik, there will be people who are for you. There will be people who are against you. But God wants you to have a mind to work. Can I hear an amen? amen? Nothing comes easy. <laughs> Write that down. Nothing will come easy. Even your salvation never came easily. Nothing comes easy. Write this also down. Nothing is for free. There is nothing in this world for free. Even when Safaricom tells you it's free internet, there is a catch. Even when the bank tells you there is no interest, there is a catch. Nothing is for free. Praise be to God. Graduate yourself from a free mode, if there is such a word, that I'm rolling with freedom. <laughs> Samaritans who understand Balat threatened, threatened attacks. You can read Nehemiah 4 to chapter, chapter 4 to chapter 7. As governor, Nehemiah negotiated peace among the Jews who are unhappy with Persian taxes. He exhibited a steadfast determination to complete his goals. So when you read the book of Nehemiah, we see a person who had so much against him, but he completed his goal because they rebuilt that wall in 52 days. Can I hear an amen? So I'm going to show you example of great workers in the Bible. Are you ready? Yes. Number one, your God, my God. Our God is a working God. Genesis 1 opens with a picture of a God at work. Psalm 102 verse 25 attests to this by saying, Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Praise God. Our God is not lazy, and he cannot afford to have kids who are lazy. He is a working God, and he believes in productivity. Jesus, matter of fact, says in John 5, 17, my father has been working, present continuous, for you English people. My father has been working until now. Praise be to God. Is God working until now? Many people think that God has been doing nothing since he rested after the creation. But Jesus says, my father has been working until now. If God works, then we also must be a working people. We must believe in the place of work and work diligently if we are going to enjoy progress in this life. Praise be to God. Listen to me, young people, Nene and the rest. You have to have a mind to work. Yes. Don't get old and then you begin working on yourself. Work on yourself now. The next person, our Lord Jesus. When he came on earth, he set out working just like his father does. He worked so diligently until they wanted to kill him for working on Sabbath. In his own defense, he said in John 5, 17, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. He announced in John 9, 4, I must work. Can we look at that? John 9, 4, he says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is still day. The night is coming when no one can work. Praise be to God. If you're going to prosper in the true blessing that God has for you, you must work. God is not a magician. Can I help you? God is not a magician. That when you give God 100,000, it comes to 100 million. If that was the case, everybody will be born again. Everybody will be coming to church. Praise be to God. 
Does that negate the fact that you should not give? No. The Bible talks about giving, and I'm going to teach us on giving one of these fine days. But listen, there is a place for prayer. There is a place for fasting. There is a place for working. And then there is also a place for working smart. Can I hear an amen? Don't just work. Work smart. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You cannot be uh, putting quails when it's not the season for quails. Chanuka yeah. mapema. Hallelujah. Amen. When they wanted him to stop working, for Jesus to stop working, so he could eat before it was his meal, he told them in John 4.34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He works so diligently. Can I hear an amen? Another character, Adam. Adam, trust me, even before he ate the fruit, he was a worker. Can I hear an amen? Genesis 2.15 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. He was working. Can I hear an amen? And if we, we married men, we assume that our wives are gardens. We should work on our wives. And it's not boxing your wife. You should work on your wife. Can I hear an amen? Can I challenge you, married man? If your wife goes back to her, to her father, what have you added? What have you added in your wife's nini? At least, mongeze masomo. Praise be to God. Give your wife some exposure. One of the things married men you should understand, when you build your wife, she builds you back. Can I hear an amen? Didn't your word, did the word of God say, say she's your helper? So if you're nagging your wife, she's going to help you nag better. Can I hear an amen? Build your wife. Ladies, ladies, I'm here. Are you seeing me? Ladies. Don't get married to somebody who cannot build you. Don't get married to somebody who just want, wants to mount on you. I'm using very fine words here. The only thing they want is to mount on you. Tell them to mount a bicycle. Can I hear an amen? By the way, even you're to not in, this is now counseling I'm giving you for free. Can I hear an amen? Do you know actually you marry who you are? You actually marry your own kind. Yes, you marry your own kind. Can I hear an amen? amen. Work on yourself. Ladies, work on yourself. You're going to get there in Jesus' name. So we see Adam was doing what? Working. Let's go to Apostle Paul. One of the greatest Christians who ever lived. He was also a working man. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 10. But by the grace of God, you know this scripture, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. So he acknowledges, Anne, that the grace of God was the first thing that I received. But he doesn't stop there. He says what? But I labored more abundantly than they that had not received grace. Yet not I. But the grace of God, which was, was with me. Can I hear an amen? So in his calling, Tony, this man labored. If you read the accounts of Apostle Paul, there are times he will say, bring my books. He was a student of the word of God. Let me pause and talk to people who are going to be called for ministry. The people, and I'm going to use Ken as an example. If God has called you for ministry, you must work on yourself. Read the word. Hallelujah. Become a man of prayer. The, 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 the wings of the spirit are in prayer. Become a man of prayer. Become a man of the word. Become a man of... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, become somebody that walks in love. Praise be to God. And let me tell you this. People who are being called for ministry. Never... What did I say? Never. never, never run your ministry in another man's ministry. Can I say it again? Never run your ministry in another man's ministry. Can I explain? 
This is what I basically mean, including the people in the marketplace. Don't do your business in another ma man's business. Like, you can't, you can't be in Safaricom and you're, and you're selling Uji amongst the people in Safaricom without their permission. Am I making sense? So when it comes to ministry, and maybe I don't have a prophetic unction, but God has given you the prophetic unction. So me, I'm preaching here, you are the one giving people prophecies down there. You're, you're becoming disloyal and you're breaking the body of Christ. You want to prophesy? Go begin your own work. <laughs> go. Like I, like I trusted God for you to come. Go outside there, trust God for people to come. You prophesy over them. Am I making sense? Exactly. Praise be to God. Do you know how much it takes to have one person come to church? Do you know? It's a lot of work. Praise be to God. It cost me hours of prayer together with my wife for one person to come. Then you take them away. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be faithful. Can I hear an amen? Does that mean you cannot give people advice? I learned by my spiritual father that when somebody comes to ask me for wisdom, I will give them wisdom and then I go to him and tell him, so and so came to me for wisdom. I told him X, Y, Z. Was it correct? Why? Because Velma, as a pastor, I am watching over your souls. Can I show you that scripture? All right, let's go to Hebrews 13. Some of these things, is, it's important that you be taught. Okay, we are going to read it in the message. Ndiyo ujisome we mwenye. Message Bible, inasema nini? Appreciate your pastoral leaders who gave you the word post. New Testament church. When, it, when I will be teaching you on giving, appreciation is not saying, Pasi, that was a nice message. The Bible says, give double honor to them that labor in word and in doctrine. Double honor there comes from financial ability. So it is scriptural. Kununulia Pasi Nyama. Sijitetei. Sijitetei. Sijitetei ni ukweli. Because the same Bible in Asema, others have, have a right of this aside from us. Ukienda kwa makanga, unampeaga kitu. I'm not saying you hung up, I see. I, okay, let's go to... Wacha tuwa chane na iyo. Ni maona baka mume change your countenance. God has taken care of me. By the way, God has really taken care of me. When God gives us such instruction, it's for your own benefit. So appreciate your pastoral leaders who gave you the word of God. Take a good look at the way they live. Take a good look. Please come, my baby. Take a good look at the way they live. Do we love each other? Do we pray for you? Do we love you? Take a good look. Please, take a good look. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you. Uh-huh. As well as their truthfulness. There should be a consistency that runs through us all. Show us in the amplified. Yes, the consistency part. Can I hear an amen? Remember your leaders and superiors in authority. For it was they who brought to you the word of God. Observe attentive and consider their manner of living. The outcome of a well spent. We have a well spent life. All right? And imitate their... So, you see, so when I tell you my stories, God expects you to imitate my faith. Uh-huh. Their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, and their leaning of the internal human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence. Hey, that's why it's called the Amplified. Okay? Verse 17. Yeah, you can uh -huh. obey let me read for you obey your spiritual leaders and recognize their authority for they keep watch over your soul without resting since they will give an account to God so ukiona pasi hata nakuuliza mbona ukuja church it's because I'm going to give an account someday it might not matter to you it matters to me I will give an account 
to God for my work. So it will benefit you when you make my work a pleasure. <laughs> Can we read that? It, it makes, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Grace to Toleo. Their work is to watch over your soul and they are accountable to God. Give them reasons to do this with joy. So you should give reasons to your pastor for them to do their job with joy. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Oh, karibu ni kupandia simu yenye. Or I give her. You should nini with joy. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. So Paul now says that by the grace of God, I labored. All right? This apostle, when you read the book of Acts, he was working on tents. Praise be to God. Amen. He worked on tents. He did not wait for offerings. He was working on tents. And let me give you a rider, people who are going to be called into ministry. Caro, you're also being called into ministry. Let me help you understand something because it is important, even as we follow the example of Apostle Paul, we also need to understand that Apostle Paul is not the final authority. The Holy Spirit is the final authority. So you will find men of God that are men of God and they do business. They are in their call. God has wired them to be that way. Then there are certain men of God that you are exclusively into full-time ministry. Now, how do you know God has called you into full-time ministry? Number one, there is supernatural provision. God will not allow you to wait on offerings. It is waiting on offerings and tithes that makes a pastor rogue. You're not ready to hear. I help you. It is waiting on your tithes and offerings that makes a pastor rogue. But when God says you're into full-time ministry, wait on me. I will never wait on you to give. I will wait on the one who sent me. Can I hear an amen? amen. So, Ken, if God calls you into full-time ministry, let him pro provide. Don't preach something that you're not practicing. Mm. Mm? Don't cut corners. Bishop will tell us, if you cannot be a lizard, if you cannot be a crocodile in Kenya, you cannot be a lizard in the U.S. Don't export what you're not working on. Don't tell us things you have not experienced. Experience them, then preach them. So, if, if Glenn, you're called into ministry and God allows you to work, don't think we are inferior. Is this good preaching? Tujakuitisha pesa. Leo huyu mwenye ako full time asifikirie wewe unaenda kwa dunia. Umekuwa Demas. Hapana kila mtu ako na race yake. I know I'm making sense. Praise be to God. And I'm not a lazy pastor. I can work. Oh. I was in I was in IT. I was in car hire business. So, Pastor, why are you not doing IT and Kaya business? I have an exclusive instruction from the Lord. Do full-time ministry. I asked him. Because God and me, kuna watu God and this one I cannot dare. This one I dare, he goes. So, me, I got exclusive. And God has been providing supernaturally. Praise be to God. Is he making sense? So, the Apostle Paul says, in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, if anyone will not work, Neither shall he, uh, to some, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, it's a command. They should not. Yes. They should not. Now, to the kwa wa sewa centro. To tu. No, I'm just helping us. Because I have, it's my work. If Glenn, Glenn awezi kaaga home. Velma analeta kitungu, maziwa, nyanya, kila kitu from the work of our hands, unga. And unga is now gold. Ujua ni kuwanaona mimflani hapo, atisaizi unga inachungo na G4S. It's among the dangered nini, yeah? We unakaa, you're just watching Netflix. Okay. Let's even spiritualize it. You're now watching sermons. God has called you. Now you're watching sermons and waiting on God. Sindio? 
Then she comes, she makes the food, then you eat, and then at night you still want to eat and gain. You can't eat because your wife now is doing the function of your mother, and you can't eat your mother. Sinukweli. Sinukweli. You're married to your mother. That should provoke you to go on. Can I hear an amen? Now, by the way, to Ongeo Kweli, Mr. Francis, there is a joy. Yenyo kika umeleta nyama. Ata kama ujaleta nyama, umeleta mboga. Unaka unasema na hii chakula kwa na ikuji. Eh? Eh, hey, inakupatia bonga points. Kwa ni nyama ikuji? Eh, hey, mini konja sana. But wife akiletaga? Eh, hey, unongia na mihem, inaitago mihemko. Nisema. Eh, tulikuwa tunafast leo. 21 days bado iko. Can I hear an amen? Praise be to God. I am not against pedicure and manicure. But after you've done that, man, provide them a family. They come after. Me hata sijei fanya. Unaona bado kuna tumchanga. Nijajua kufanya kazi. Atanleta. Ay, manze. I've been working. So alafu mina wambia, open the book of Ephesians. Chapter number three. <laughs> Praise be to God. And let me tell you, God, I may provide njia. Kila mtu aneza. You can work. Can I hear an amen? Ken uneza kosa kuchoro job safari kom. Lakini niko shua ukona jiko kwa ko. Niko shua uneza nunua maindi. Na uneza pepeta hivi watu wakule. God sees it. Kama una kapito, ati? Oh, tutatafuta. Wacha duweke disclaimer. <laughs> Eh? Eh, answer na yo moja, maindi moja. You know, I saw, I saw a meme at I started a chicken business with one feather. Get a feather. <laughs> no excuse. Praise be to God. Ata tukiona unachoma maindi, manzi si hata ndapitiaga hapo kila siku. Ata kama sizikuli, ndanunua tu. Na hata jioni kazi janunulio pelekia familia. You have provided dinner. I'm preaching good. And I'm helping people here. Praise be to God. He says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, 11. That you should aspire to lead a quiet life. To mind your own business. And to work with your hands. <laughs> eh? So mind your own business is not a function of a movie. When you're busy. You will mind your own business. Me by the sinaga, my wife will tell you sinaga time ya panganga. Like you see, see my wife did a good job last Sunday, yeah. preaching powerfully. Yeah. Amen. Let's appreciate her. Yeah. All right. When we were going home, ali niuliza mbona sweet ume ume nyamaza ivo. Nika mbio na jona fikiria Sunday. Already assignment ya Sunday na nikula. Now, if assignment ya Sunday ina nikula, I don't have time for gossip. I don't have time for funny stories. Praise be to God. Matter of fact, when you bury yourself in your work, you look for like-minded people. And ways to grow yourself. By the way, the moment you decide I'm growing myself, mungu anakuwa mefungua milango. Kabisa, can I hear an amen? Mind your own business. Lead a quiet life. Bona sifuwe sana. When you're not busy, you will, you will actually visit every person in church. Na wacha ni kuambia kitu moja pasi wangu alinisaidia. Aliniambia, you develop the art of going to people's homes. Siku moja utaambio kikitu. Kana hiyan amen. That is how familiarity begins to crop in. That doesn't mean I will not visit your house. I will. But I cannot be visiting every Sunday. Iyo kuzoyana ndi unapataga mse mbaka lingia bedroom. Lead a quiet life. Mind your own business. This is Apostle Paul. The, the one who says that you are a new creation. <laughs> He's saying what? Mind your own business. There is a proverb that used to say, mind your P's and Q's. And to work with your hands 
as we have commanded you. Hallelujah. The other person that worked is who? King Solomon. Now you can say, Pasi, he worked on the wives. No. King Solomon worked. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. Praise be to God. What if there is a bank in you and you're still banking with equity? What if there is a telecommunication company in you? What if there is a hospital in you? What if there is a ministry in you? Grace, what if there is a Sinach in you? And you're always mesmerized by Sinach. Why can't you be the next Sinach? Work on yourself. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Worship team. Historia kutuambia sikizeni, msisikize, saonti, sikizeni, maneno. No, work on yourself. Work on the vocals. Bona sifuwe sana. Work on the vocals. What if one of these fine days you are called onto an international pl platform? Wanza kuimba kized. Can I hear an amen? amen? Write this down and never forget. When you step into your season and you're not prepared, you will lose it. When you step into your season and you're not prepared, you will lose it. You will lose it. That is why the sons of Issachar understood the times. For some of you, Mr. Francis, I say this by the Spirit. For some of us, we are not meant to be working. We are meant to go back to school. But at the timings, na seasons. So in Africa, God is God and allow to a job. Because we get it. Praise be to God. For some of the single people, you're not even supposed to be marrying or even looking for a spouse. Maybe you're supposed to be going back to school. Hallelujah. So King Solomon continues to say in Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is. In all mongedo. Poverty. In all labor, there is. But idol panganga. That is the Bible according to me. Idol panganga. Leads only to. Your profit is in your labor. It doesn't matter how much of a church goer you are. It doesn't matter how much you pray. If you do, if all you do is talk about prosperity, it won't come. Roll up your sleeve and work. Praise be to God. After Pasia said you shall drive the best, now go work so that you can earn money and buy the best. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Look at some of the Scriptures he had to say in the book of Proverbs. I'm going to read for you. Proverbs 10, verse number 4. Proverbs 10, verse number 4. He who has a slack hand becomes but the hand of the diligent. Proverbs 12, 24. Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent will rule, but they will be forced so if you're into forced labor. <laughs> but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Praise be to God. And let me tell you, I can prophesy promotion, but I noted something. After I prophesy, become the best in the company. Go early. Finish on your assignment. Don't procrastinate. By the way, when you're top notch, even the management recognizes. Hey, um, say, ni asset. So, ata, ata panga ikikuja ya kuchujua. Uwe zi chujua? Bona sifuwe sana. Lakini we unahang koti kama wasi wakanjo. Oh, pastor, I've been praying for promotion for seven years. Even God is saying you're not faithful in another man. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 13, verse number 4. 
What does it say in Proverbs 13, verse number 4? The soul of a lazy man desires. Wow. I desire an iPhone. I desire a Range Rover. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent. After you desire, be diligent. Oh. Don't desire a good marriage. Work on yours. Can I hear an amen? Proverbs 21, verse number 5. This is blessing my heart. Proverbs 21, verse number 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. But those of everyone who is hasty to poverty. Unajua Mr. Francis, hii kizazi tuko, wanataka microwave. Kila kitu ikuja pa, 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 pa. Hakuna. The only thing that begins on top is a toilet. And a grave. Can I hear an amen? Work. Work on yourself. Iyo kitabu wa kuja, juna desire kuje. Sit down, write the book. Iyo song wa come, juna piga ma. After write the lyrics, go to the studio. I'm preaching good. So, points to remember about work. Number one, the work of your hands is your primary channel through which God blesses you. The work of your hands is your primary channel through which God blesses you. He told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 16 verse 15, that in all the work of your hands, you shall be blessed. All right? Number two, work is an expression of faith. Can I repeat number one? The work of your hand is the primary channel through which God blesses you. Deuteronomy 16, 15. Number two, work is an expression of your faith. Work is an expression of your faith. Hmm? James 2, verse 18. Can we read James 2, verse 18? But someone will say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my... You see, faith is Pastor Bob opening this place, trusting God that people will come. That is faith. Faith is, I'm going to open. Work is coming to wash, putting up the seats, making it comfortable for you to come. And preparing the sermon. So it cannot be faith only. It is faith and also you have to work. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And Ken, even when you go to begin ministry, even if it's one person, that is faith. Keep exercising that faith. Praise be to God. All right? The third thing, work for the sake of motion will not profit, profit you. Work for the sake of motion will not profit you. Profitable work involves the effort of the body and the mind to produce a desired result. It means to accomplish something. And listen to me, I have seen an anomaly with Africans. We begin, but we never finish. Senior, how many buildings have you seen? They began, they are yet to be finished. It is, it is a sickness that is not nice. Make sure where whatever you begin, you finish. When you begin reading a book, finish it. How come you can finish a movie, but you can't finish a book? Tell your neighbor, ouch. ouch. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. All right. Let's go to the next point. God blesses the work of our hands, not the empty words of our lips. God will bless the work of your hands, not the empty words of your lips. Proverbs 14, 23, where we've read, it says, in all labor, there is profit. Next, after the fall of man, the default state of anything is chaos. After the fall of man, the default state of anything is chaos. See, for the married people, you are different people getting into a union. 
different ideologies, different mindsets. You have got to put the ideologies, Kando, and work on yourself for the marriage to work. So after the fall of man, the default state of anything is chaos. If you don't shave, Sami, you will come, you'll become a bushman. Because the default state of anything is chaos. You don't shower. Hey, you'll give a skunk a run for its money. And scare all the girls. The default state of anything is chaos. Can I talk to the single guys? Single guys, lift up your hand. Listen, single men. You might not have designer suits, but at least pick a passy. Iyo enye ukonayo, pick a passy. Iyo ukonayo, osha. Squeezy colon ni 20 bob. Ama yo ni ya... Nile ya ya isili. Yo ni isili. Tunakusikia ukiwa uko. Get some cologne. Ama aje gabu. Get some cologne. Sindio? Nunua some tic tacs. So that when you're talking to sisters, you don't slay them. Wanafikiria ni holy ghost when ni breath wa meanda tu wa chini. Can I hear an amen? Single men work on being a husband. Now that you're single. Work on how to be a husband when you get married. Because iki to my friend. Uliza are the married people hapa. Wata kuambia. Iki to si mchezo. Can I hear an amen? Ask the married women. You know these married women. See, they are beautiful. Married women, your hands up. Skiza. Goja, goja, goja. Samo ni yangu. Mindi ona preach. <laughs> One of the ways you work on yourself is ask. Wacha ni waambia na ni wasaidie kabisa. Simini pasi wenyu. One of the mistakes you might end up doing is never coming to ask me stuff. Because me, I will not come to tell you. Wisdom is pursued. <laughs> Wisdom is what? Is pursued. Oh. Can I hear an amen? You want to know about marriage? Look for me and my wife. Ask us. How have you been able to stay for 15 years together? I will give you pointers. But this generation has to fall into a ditch. <laughs> then they ask for help. And no help about the, the ditch. Help ni toke so that I look for another ditch. Ningie. That is your greatest mistakes. Ikifika ni Rorashio, Mr. Francis. How many have asked you about Rorashio? How many? Yet your siku ya rorashio wanaenda wanafanya blanda. Because you're not pursuing wisdom. That is how you work on yourself. How do you want to be, to imitate me as a husband? And you don't ask me how I am able to, to be a husband. Can I hear an amen? It's like me. Are you looking at me? It's like me going to bishop and telling bishop, you know, you should be doing this. Hey, Jesus, my God. <laughs> I'm even shocked. Ama niende kwa, kwa, kwa dad, Pastor Andrew, mwambi, ah, dad, unajua. When I go to him, I sit down with a notebook. I ask him questions. The problem with us, we don't ask questions. Can I hear an amen? Uneza shtuka sana ken, that kitu inakusumbua, Mr. Francis anajua kukusaidia. But you are too prideful to ask. Uliza, kuwa fala, uliza. Can I hear an amen? Do you know, unajua had to struggle the same level? <laughs> oh, let me not even go there. We don't struggle in, struggle in the same level. So easy, Mimi having five, yeah, five because one went to be the Lord. Five boys. Have a, have a mind to work. Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Work with your own hands what we have commanded you. You see, me nikiwa na watoto watano, niko sure Glenn and Julizaga na um si ana survive gigaje. Si ndio? Hata mimi sijuagi tuna survive gigaje. I just know I'm a father of all boys. I can't tell you how we survive. 
So Glenn anaweza anaweza fikiria yeye kwa sababu wamejipanga apate watoto siku fulani he is very wiser than me. But the day Velma becomes pregnant Glenn has two options. Come and ask how do you become a parent or learn the hard way. The choice is yours. My generation find somebody that has gone ahead of you and is doing something that you admire then sit your bum bum and take notes don't share notes don't tell them you have a ravi keep your ravi to your pocket sit down learn can i repeat it again find somebody that has gone ahead of you in what you desire to do then sit your bum bum b u m and learn your work is to ask questions not to suggest ask questions don't suggest can i hear an amen your time will come when another person will be sitting under you can i hear better amen? amen praise be to god amen. and you see for the guys in ministry and this is one of the things i fell mini na jiongeaga you might think Mimi pasia kanipe mic. Ha. Tu. Eh? Hiyo siku ndakuja na t-shirt ya the roof. The roof is on fire. Ah? There is that kafalasi. It is when you are preaching for 52 weeks in a year that you honor that man. Because how is he able to preach every Sunday for all those years? You see, for example, Ken is going to be preaching to us next month. Next month, oh. Ken akona mwezi ya kuprepare. Ataenda baka kataloni. Akikuja seme, praise the Lord. Muanguke hivi. Unasema, hey, napasia naga mafuta. Pasia naga mafuta. Yeah, me prepare for a one sprint race. Mia me in a marathon. Na hata akawasilein aka, aka muanguke hivi. <laughs> the Bible says, Jesus speaking, a student can never be greater than the master. I still have one more card down here. Praise be to God. So when you're sitting to be mentored, shelf your wisdom. For if your wisdom was helping you, you will not come to me in the first place. Tindio, shelf your wisdom. Sit down and learn. It is going to help you. And your Bible is saying, Ukuwe na roya mtoto. Mtoto ajui kitu, anakaga, anasoma. Can I help you? Uneza kuwa ata uneza, uneza dissect wada hapa, kuniliko. But I still have one card, you don't know. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So, the default state of anything is what? Work on yourself. Matter of fact, please work on saving money. by faith. Wakati God shall provide by faith. Learn the culture of saving, brother. Learn it. Mapema. Learn it mapema before the millions come. Can I hear an amen? When you have 10 shillings, it's not money to buy chewing gum. You're eating your way out. Can I hear an amen? Don't be eating chewing gum. Can I hear an amen? amen. What I say, Mimi God, I stewardship the hard way. I pray you don't get to those dimensions with God. It's not nice. To a point that right now, Ken, if you give me a hundred thousand together with my wife, we can't spend. I will ask him, "E hundred thousand, Yanini." I have learned my my lessons, and most of the time, my wife will tell you, "We have got seasons we get colossal amounts of money." He tells us, "Put it in the bank." Can I hear an amen? Wewe mungu waneza kusumamisha? Ama yu siku ndo tanunuwa frijile ya double doors. Apuna sema the God of double doors. If today God gave you a hundred million, what will be your next step? A Range Rover, you have not even asked God. Kujenga, you have not asked God. Kufly out, you have not asked God. Ndiyo unawonaga God, atuwezi pita mahali na mungu. 
Can I hear an amen? amen? Do you know everything you have, Velma, is not yours? How many you, how many you thought everything is yours? No. You are a steward. The Bible says, moreover, it is required that in a steward be found faithful. Stewardship, I said to some guys yesterday, if I give you this Bible, I tell you, hold on to the Bible till I come for it. Is it his? It's mine. Does he have the liberty to read the Bible? Yes. But in his mind, he should always know it is not. Now, let's come to finances. Everything God gives you is his, including your salary. So God akikupatia? Saloni yake. Then he tells you, support the kingdom. Wo unasema, wachungaji wanakula pesa sana. I will not support the kingdom. What are you doing? You are throwing a tantrum to the one who gave it to you. To what belongs to him. So what God does, he will not take it back because the gifts of God, he doesn't take back. But that is your level. You have proved to God that now I cannot even give you more. You are not a steward. Can I hear the amen? Stewardship. When you are told to give your tithes and give your offerings and uh, Support the work of God. God is not raising money. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Write this down. God does not raise money through offerings and tithes. That is not how he raises money. God raises his kids through stewardship. So, wake up, Adona, on a debate, need, nitoe, nisitoe. You are not a steward. Well, in fact, you are a child. Well, nika, nika, nika children. Praise be to God. We shall look at that in the time of talking about what? Giving. Next, discover your goal in life. What is that one assignment that you believe you must fulfill in your lifetime? One of the ways prosperity will come your way is by doing the one thing that God called you to do. For Jesus, it was to preach the kingdom of God. For the apostle Paul, the same. For Moses, deliver the children of Israel. For Elijah, Elisha, and the judges that we see in the Old uh, Testament, deliver the children of Israel. For Ken, for Glenn, political. Can I hear an amen? And the fallacy that we have is stop comparing yourself with others. What's a kuingia assignment yangu? Weka yako. Do you know Mr. Francis Nikikwambia, when I can, I want you to share on faith. You can have the same scriptures, but different approach. That's your uniqueness. Celebrate your uniqueness. Praise be to God. Is he making sense? All right. So, next, the time to work for your future success is now when you're still young. The time to work for your future success is now when you're still young. Lamentations 3.27 says, it is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Youth is a powerful resource. It is time when you're strong, flexible, and you have a lot of time in your hands. Hmm? You will not always be young. Do you know that? Ken Sikitambo likona kimbia sana. Saizi toka 100 meters mbio. Tutakupeleka garage. Eh? Your daughter di wana kimbia. O kitoka mbio, we will have a healing service. To pray for dislocated joints. You will not always be young. Watch and you will Isn't it amazing that just the other day, Turko Tunasema, we are now beginning the last part of 2022. Trust me, ten days are over. Just like that. And the enemy of work is procrastination. Nitafanya. Nitafanya. Nitasoma Ephesians kesho. Kesho ikujagi. Kesho ikujagi. Kesho itakuja. Can I hear the amen? 
Praise be to God. Is it making sense? Yes. Now I close with this, and then now we go home. Signs of laziness. Because I eat, eh? I tell you, this sermon used to provoke me so much. I pray it provokes you. Ilini provoke mbaka nika jua kumbe, I can be a businessman. Signs of laziness. Number one, loving your bed. <laughs> loving your bed. Proverbs 26, verse number 14. Tutasoma is the scripture. Proverbs 26, verse number 14. Inasema nini, Grace? As a door turns on his hinges, so does a lazy man. And of course, okona ile mlango inalia. As a door turns on his hinges, so does the lazy man. Wow. Nikate simu. Let's look at Proverbs 6, verse number 9. Proverbs 6, verse number 9. You're wishing you didn't come for service today? Proverbs 6, verse number 9. How long? 6, 9, Nasema? How long will you slumber? Oh, slugger. When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a proler. Sumuendele kusoma, kwa ni mumeshtuka? Bas. Wee lala tu? Umaskini nakuja like an armed man. Can we look at the message Bible? Oh, eh, leo muta lala. So how long are you going to laze around? Doing nothing. How long before you get out of bed? A nap here, a nap there. A day of here, a day of there. Sit back, take it easy. Do you know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life. Poverty, your permanent. Carol, Unona generation of apa? There is no. Unona the voice of your father's here. This is the gospel. Ni wewe, we lala tu. Lala tu. Afu ko na kapa kwa Southern Bypass, unaisabiki tu gari. Shua, shua. Na hii Kenya watu wako na pesa. Atisia tuna. We ndio una pesa? Wewe ndio una pesa? Watu wako na pesa? Eh? You go, you go. Ebu enda hii barabara hii 104. 4 a.m. Range Rovers. V VX. Big cars. 4 a.m. 6 a.m. Matatu. 7. Wase wamigu. I've got nothing wrong and I'm not demeaning any person. I'm showing you why those guys are ahead. Don't love your sleep. One man of God alini castigate. It's a word. Tony namanisha nini juwe ni mzungu? Alini reprimand. Yes. Ah, sani meongeze ingine. Alini kajol. Alini destoloy. Alini ambia. Ii ilini bless. Atinifanya ile kitu. We gabu we. Alini ambia jevelma. You should never sleep before your wife sleeps. And she should not wake up before you wake up. So me at a father in the car in the on another evening. Back a lale. Wisdom. Aliniambia, you should always become mysterious to your wife. Ajuagi unalala sangapi, unamuka sangapi. Lakini manzewe ya litu usili unangoro, unangorote ile. Unape polar bears, competition. You sleep more than a polar bear. You're not sleeping, you're hibernating. 
Can I hear an amen? Ask them. Ask the guys that, are, that, that come to stay in my, in my house. Ask them. Nitamaliza kupricha hapa. Nitaiza wacha waone movie. Niende kusikiza salmon. I learned. I worked on myself. Can I hear an amen? Whatever my wife has been doing in the diploma nini, I taught her before she went to school. Ama? Singe kuwa na your ability kaa na lala tu. No. Can I hear an amen? Ata sa zingine ukisikia usingizi ya muka uombe. Shaka bose kata. Iba bababa. Sada dada. Afadhali tuambia kwe pasta. Ukwa tulalagi ni maombi. I'm helping somebody here. And do you want to get married to a lazy man? I love you. You don't want a husband that is cute with a six pack and lazy. Concussion mbaya sana. Can I hear an amen? Afadhali a short man that is sweating. <laughs> Am I short? Can I hear an amen? The next sign, Adi. The next sign of laziness. Finding excuse for not doing things. You're always finding excuse not to do things. There's a scripture. Proverbs 26, 13. Proverbs 26, 13. Nasema nini? The lazy man says, there's a lion in the road. A fierce lion in the street. Twendele? The lazy person says, there's a lion in the road. There's a lion in the street. Eh? Uh -huh. Oh, you Are you getting? There is no lion on the street, but he's too lazy. But again, metaphorically speaking, there are many lions that you're going to face. All right? Competitions in the marketplace. is only car lions. They will remain intimidating and will have dominion over you until you work diligently. Number three. Waiting for a perfect condition before they can work. You will never get a perfect condition. Praise be to God. Kama, una, kama unataka kufanya biashara ya Uber. Right now you might not be able to buy a car for Uber. They are going for a couple of millions. You might not get a car for Uber. Why don't you go ahead and look around for somebody who can give you a car. Uku unampatia something small and you keep something back. It makes sense. Can I hear an amen? amen? You can't wait for perfect conditions for you to work. Let me help you. When we were getting married, I was looking for a perfect condition to get married. And it's one of the things men struggle with. Unataka kila kitu iko in place, ndiyo you marry. Trust me, there will never be a perfect time for you to get married. We marry by faith. Can I hear an amen? Don't wait for you to become evangelist, doctor, king, PhD. And saizo ndi unafungua ministry. There will never be a perfect time. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Can I hear an amen? The next point Lazy people are not self-starters. Manze usikwe sukumatoende. One of the things, and I'm praying that I'm going to hammer to the guys that are, are, are going to go for ministry, are going to begin ministry work. Don't be a sukumatoende. Can I hear an amen, Glenn? When I send you, Glenn, to a government office, don't give me excuses. Find out how you're going to bring results to me. Bona sifuwe sana. Mr. Francis, my pastor, see you saw him. One time, Apple Church, it's a very busy road. Alitoka kwa gari ya listen, I want bumps here. Na kaishia. Na uwezi chota mchanga, uweke bump. Uweski, uya mecheka zile za orogeria. Muhujia orogeria, ukijaribu. Uwezi eka zile bump za Mchanga, my friend, I had to do research. I went to Nikajoku na office in Etago Kura na Kenha. I had to apply for bumps. And he will come and tell me, I am not seeing bumps. I want bumps here. One time in the evening, Kenha and Kura comes. Wakaika bumps hapo. 
Yeye mwenyewe my spiritual father. Bishop told him, I want you to go get a document. It was a very sensitive document that could only be in the deputy's president's office. And he was told, I want you to come with that document. He had to maneuver his way and come with the document. Don't be a problem. Become a solution. Can I hear an amen? So Glenn, if I tell you we are doing a crusade there, don't give me stories. You would rather tell me, by the way, I have used my pocket money uh, for the crusade. I, I don't have house rent. I will sort you out. But you cannot, I cannot be looking for the sermon and also looking for the way to convene the meeting. Am I making sense? Hmm. Become a self-starter. Bonus if you are sana. For the people in the marketplace, become a self-starter. Anza kitu. Ate kianguka, imeanguka, siwe umeanguka. Anza ingine. Try. So lazy people ask kumatwendes. Who await motivation? Motivational speaker. I started my chicken business with a feather. Mungina niliona ati, I started my butchery business with a quarter meat. That's motivation. By the motivation of speaking, nika kuona movies a kung fu. Una toka una fikirio na zapiga kila mtu karate. <laughs> Until you try una pigwa. Always remember that other people's attempt to motivate you will only keep you going for a while. But it is your personal discipline that will keep you growing. Can I hear an amen? Praise be to God. Ken, desire to be better than me. Don't be me. Be better than me. Do an exegesis proper than me. Can I hear an amen? All right? And you see, a good pastor is never intimidated when people that he's raising are better than him. In fact, it's my joy. Wewe una imagine nikikaa chini mpaka mpaka Ken anani professor ya kama ya kama. I'm joking. Next, don't uh, lazy people don't finish what they begin. Lazy people don't finish what they begin. Proverbs 26 verse 15. Inasema nini? Proverbs 26:15. The lazy person, eh hey, ni noma, hii lazima tusome pamoja. They, be, they don't finish what they begin. To some of the The lazy person buries his hand in the dish and is too tired. Yani, awayala shapashi. Akili anashindo kuleta yo chapo aikule hivi. Wow. Akona mchezo. Finish what you begin. Can I hear an Amen. We will finish strong. Yes. Married people, there is no marrying another person. Mke ni ule ule. Praise be to God. Ukienda shule, manze maliza shule. Najua uneza kosa school fees, but maliza shule. Tony has a very nice testimony. You heard it when he was here. He gave us the testimony that Alisoma na a lot of hardship, but he has a degree. Finish what you? Ukianza kusoma Ecclesiastes. That kind of boring, maliza. Mali? Mali? Amen. Next. Lazy people love explaining why it wasn't done. Lazy people love explaining why it wasn't done. Proverbs 10, 26. Proverbs 10, 26. Inasema nini, Grace? Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so are the lazy... Oh 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 oh. <laughs> to some people, I want to go like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes. So are the lazy message in a semanini? Yanu nona vile moshi ina kuchapa kwa macho hivo ina ku ina ku a lazy person to the employer. Imagine message in a semanini a lazy employee will give you nothing but trouble. It's vinegar in the eyes, in the mouth, and smoke in the eyes. Wow. God help us. Next. Lazy people are not organized. Lazy people are not organized. 
Lazy people are not organized. I'm going to teach you some of these fine days, ladies, on the Proverbs 31 woman. We must demystify some certain things. In as much as it's the role of a husband to provide, you also can bring some munde, some money. Or... The Bible says in Proverbs 31, 18. Let's go there. Proverbs 31, 18. What does it say? Proverbs 31. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out of night. Yani, the husband at the marketplace, the wife also goes to the marketplace. So when the husband brings a million, the wife is bringing 500,000. That's the kind of a wife that is working. She doesn't wait for the lamp to go out in their days. Are you seeing that culture of working? So like I said, they are not organized. Learn to organize yourself. Praise be to God. And teach your kids to organize themselves. In as much as I have the children of Israel, <laughs> the children of Israel, I keep on telling them, make your bed. Ah, huh? you saw it, Tony. I tell them, make your bed, do dishes. Historia kuacha watoto ati waoshi nini. Ndiyo anakuja uko wanafanya vituko. Wewe suliosha vyombo, ulikufa? Wacha waoshe vyombo. Na nyumba. Na kwenda shamba, na chemshe maziwa. I'm preaching good. Uh, the Greek word is nannying <laughs> is we are lazing our children. We are spoiling them. Wewe siku yako velma ulikuwa na PS station hapo unacheza PS hivi. Hata ungegeria. Oh, kugeria ni Eh? Ungejaribu. Ungejaribu. It is that mentality that has given you a working culture. Can I hear an amen? Let them wash utensils. Let them go do farming. Give them goats. I tell you, it's going to help them. Huh? I was surprised that some people amongst us how is it kuku? Wow. And it's a man. Wow. Na simu angali? Simu angali? Simu angali? Wee angalia kwa yena angalia simu angali? Can I hear amen? Let your kids work. If you have a car, Mr. Francis, let them wash the car. Wacha kuipeleka car wash. Ina wasaidia na ninajisaidia. Sindio? All right. Next, a lazy man lets external influences overwhelm their inner desires. They let their external influences overwhelm their inner desires. They can let opposition, they can let fear, they can let peer pressure overwhelm them. Somebody said the difference between successful people and those who fail is that successful people do what failures don't want to do. It is not that they are enjoying doing it, but there is an overriding sense of purpose inside them that subordinates their fear and their opposition. Can I shock you, Anne? Not every Sunday I feel like I want to preach, but I force myself to preach. Somebody posted in the group, if you're not praying, something is forcing you not to pray. Then equally you can say, if you're not growing, something is forcing you not to grow. Yes. Indo inatago personal discipline. You must tell yourself, I will grow. Push your limits. Next, there are only a couple, I think there are only, yeah, two of them to go. Never, the, the lazy person never fulfills their dreams. Ultimately, all lazy people have something in common, unfulfilled dreams. Proverbs 13, 4 says, The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be rich. All right? So remember that in this life, everything is created twice. First in your imagination, 
than on the ground. People become failures because they only created in their imagination and never go further than to actualize their dreams. Actualize your dream. Write another book. Believe God to begin another uh, uh, branch. Praise God. Praise be to God. Believe God to do an album. Hmm? Why don't you believe God to do a movie? Dream big. You see, ukianza kufanya kazi, you begin to dream big. Sini kweli? Eh, begin to dream big. Uh, lastly, lazy people have unhappy ending. They always have an, uh, an unhappy ending. Proverbs 21, 25 says, okay, the craving of the lazy person is fatal. For lazy hands, message, a message in a semanini? Lazy people finally die. Lazy people finally die of because To his home tena. <laughs> Lazy people finally. It's not premature death. They just die because they don't want to work. Can we see it in the in other versions like NLT? What does it say? NLT, NLT. Ukipata uyeke hapo. So your happiness and satisfaction in the latter days of your life will depend on what you have been building in your youth. Failure to fulfill your dreams can be depressing. And that is my prayer. That you will have a mind to work. Find something and do. Taking the easy way out is the habit of a lazy man. Oh, 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 oh. Tusome, tusome. Nime malisa. Taking the easy way out is the habit of a lazy man. And it will be his downfall. All day long, he thinks about all the things he craves. For he hasn't learned the secret that the generous man has learned. Extravagant. But the point is what? Laziness will mess you up. Can I hear an amen? So, pastor, how do I begin this journey? First, identify what is your assignment. God ame kukolo fanya nini. Kozo wezi kuna fanya kila kitu. God ame kukolo fanya nini. And when you find out what God has called you to do, work towards it. Kabisa. Can I hear an amen? So on Sunday, this coming Sunday, today we have learned on what? Have a mind to work. Next Sunday, and I want you to bring somebody because this will help them. We shall be looking at what are you building? Because if you are going to have a mind to work, there must be something you're building. Cindy Ocaro and the rest of us. So we shall be talking about what are you building? I want you to just pray and talk to God and tell him, Lord, I may have not had a mind to work on my marriage, on my career, on my business. I may not have a mind to work. But today I pray. Today I pray. Give me the tenacity to have a mind to work. Give me the ability to have a mind to work. Please talk to God. Please talk to God. Please talk to God. Tell him, Lord, for, for many times and seasons, I may have never known that I didn't have a mind to work. But today you have shown me by the scriptures that I must have a mind to work. Help me 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 have a mind to work.